Okay, so welcome everybody to this, the February 2021 update here on the farm at Reesby Estates. So as promised back in the January edition, I thought I would show you a bit what goes on in the office here. And today I'm going to focus mainly on some of our mapping systems on the computers behind me. So we'll look at some of the precision involved. So when... Um, prescribing maps, for example, fertilizer application, uh, drilling when they're drilling seeds, and then all the way through to the yield monitors coming back in. I'll show you how we use satellites in the air to help guide us so that we can precisely place things where they wanted. I'll keep it fairly simple because there's quite a lot what we can do, but I'll just touch on it a little bit for now. And then in future episodes, we can build on that as we go throughout the year when we're doing other operations, just show how we're looking at, uh, at them there. So the main systems behind, we're using a, a Reza system from which is from Agri. Now we've got a satellite passing over us. It comes over us a couple of times a week. And if the, if the sky is clear, we've got a cloud free sky and it can see a good view down onto the floor. It's reading uh, many things and one is the green imagery, what's being shined back at it. And by doing that, we can we can see where the crops are, the growth stages, what they're at, um, how thick the canopy is, which enables us to precisely alter inputs um, and, and decision making to make sure everything we do is precise. So, yeah, I ho hopefully you enjoy this video. I'll, I'll get on now and show you some of the mapping what we have. So here we've got an NDVI image of one of our farming units. This is our, our Morby farming unit. Now, the as you can see up here, the NDVI, that's the um, Normalised Difference Vegetation Index. This is just basically looking at, at the green area, uh, a green patch of land on the soil. So the basically the greener we see as we look on here, then the more vegetation is upon this land. So as we get down to the red, we've got very little vegetation here, a little bit through here, and then a lot here. For example, this bit here is a little bit of grass we've popped in the end of this field, so that's um, showing green, because actually we're looking here back on the 22nd of January. So this is a an earlier image. What we've got in these fields, this is an oilseed rape field. These are all wheat fields, and that is also a wheat field. But that one was drilled considerably later than these and that's why we're seeing the difference in the colour and obviously oilseed rape has a bigger thicker greener canopy on it so we're seeing here but if we concentrate on this field what we can do here once we've seen this um, ndvi imagery here is we can see the lighter green so there's not quite as much green area in some places within this field is what there is others so what i can use this imagery for now is now we're planning our fertilizer applications is look at this imagery and we can see well some of this crop is quite thick and some of it is a little bit thinner so we can tailor our nutrition to force these field bits which aren't quite as thick on a bit more so they match the rest of the field we might pull back the nitrogen going on here and add a little bit more here but what we have to do is look at this imagery then go out into the field and ground truth it so we know when we see that color it means a certain part of the crop because when you look at oilseed rate where what we're looking for is a green area index of three and a half that will give us our optimum yield you need 50 kilos of nitrogen to build half a gai half a green area index so we know i can go in the field and stand here and take a measurement and it'll give me a gai index i can then stand here and give me a measurement it'll give me another gai index so a ground true fit and then everywhere when i look at a rate field on this package and I see these colours, I'll know what GAI I'm at, and I will know how much then nitrogen I need to add into that field in a certain area to produce the optimum crop. So we can see that depends on the cloud cover. This is a satellite passing over and giving us these images. So it's all dependent on cloud cover, but sometimes we can get a fresh image every day, every two days. So we can monitor the crop as it's growing. The other thing you can see on this map is these lines. So, for example, here's a field, and then we've got all these lines within it. All these are showing is the different soil zones within the field. So there'll be a different type of soil. There'll be a different sand, silt and clay makeup in here than what's in here and what's in here. So these are all then zoned, which means we can actually manage these different zones independently throughout this field. So, for example, 
when we come to this zone, we will soil sample in here and then we'll come in here and we'll take a W and we'll soil sample across here. This will have different indices. This will have a phosphate, a K and a mag at different levels to what this zone has. So as we then come on, I need to top up, for example, our phosphates, we can vary it. So I'll just flick on and show you a different map, how we do that. So now this is a different map we've got here. What this is looking at is our um, potassium levels within the soil. So our K levels, which are, are naturally found within our soil. So you can see through here, there's a big variation. And then we've got a scale down here. So when you look at the oranges, we're in the 1.7 going all the way down to zero when you get into the red. So if, if, we, if we take this field here, we've got some light blues, which is gonna be high in the K. So we're up to threes, um, 4.2s in this end. And then we're coming down to greens bordering on orange, which gives us sort of a two and a half to 1.7, so somewhere around the two. So big variation within this field. Really, if you've got an indices of three, you've got enough K, enough potash within the soil, so you don't need to apply any. So up at this end where we've got any blues, there's enough sufficient potash within this soil to allow a healthy growing plant. So we don't actually need to pop any on. But when we get into the greens and we're sort of into the, into the, the area where you're on twos, really it's gonna need a little bit to support that plant for its growing life. Now potash is very important within the growing part of a plant. It supports the movement of all, um, all the minerals throughout the plant through the water solution, through the sap of a plant. Without that, um, you get a lot more droughted conditions. So it's needed in a high volume. Now what the plant actually does is as it dies off, it returns a lot of that potash back into the soil, but potash can be leachable and washed out of soils. Different types of soils, K producing clays will actually naturally release enough potash, enough K, so some farms won't actually have to apply any of that at all. But here, as you can see, we're ranging from high fours down into the, the ones. So we need to, be, need to be topping up where we can, but we don't need to be applying it everywhere. So we use these maps to what we call vary rate our potash, or so our phosphates and our nitrogen levels, depending on what we need. So if I bring up another map. Now what I've actually done here, so if we concentrate on this field here, we can see these blues where it doesn't need any. And then on this side of the field, this is my application map. This will be sent through to the tractor when he's spinning the K on. All the whites are not gonna get any application of K whatsoever. And you can see that mirrored where all this blue is running in here. And this zone here is then running in here. And then we've got two different rates going on. So these red zones here, they're gonna give us, if I just pull my cursor over the top, of these red zones, I'm getting, well, it's 52 kilos of actually product going on. So it's only putting 31 kilos of potash on in them red zones. And then when we get into the more bluer zones, we've got 94 kilos of, of product going on. So we're getting 56 kilos of potash into these blue. So as the tractor travels down this field, it'll be off, it'll be off. As it enters one of these zones, it'll recognize it for its GPS positioning and turn the spreader on. And it will aim to spread only potash within this red zone. As he drives down the field and comes out, it will automatically switch itself off. It'll come down, turn around, keep going up and down the field and the spreader will automatically turn itself on and off as needed. So we're only applying product where there's an indication from the field it's actually needed. That means all this area is not getting no wasted product on whatsoever, but we're keeping these areas very productive. So that's just one way where we're, we're precision plying potash. We do it with phosphates as well. And like I say, we do it with nitrogen. The other thing we also do is through variable rating seed. So I'll show you another map. Okay, and then here's another example of what we can do with this imagery. So here's another NDVI imagery. This one was taken here on the 5th of April. So what we're finding is, is the imagery back on in sort of early April is a very good indication of what the final yield will be. So this is a field of wheat. Again, you can see the different types of soil zones running along it. And we've got some very different patches in here, very dark green here. So this means this has got a lot of green area, a lot of green biomass here and here, and then not so much in these areas. 
And again, around here, this is probably down here caused more by rabbits coming out of the big hedgerow and taking the green area away. We have a gateway just in the field here, but we can see the trends throughout it. Now what we do, so this is back in April. If you fast forward this now to when we actually harvest the wheat in here, you will see that on here. So this is a combined yield monitor from when we've actually harvested this field. Now, if you can see on here, so if we look back here, darker blues mean we've had more yield and as it gets a lighter color, so into the greens, we're losing yield. So in here, we've got an area where we haven't actually yielded quite so much crop. But if you look back on here, you can see here a lighter field where it hasn't got as much biomass carrying. And again here, this really deep green here where we've got a lot of biomass runs down here and we've got a real deep blue. So you can see it's mirroring. That's green area, that's the crop growing. And this is actual yield. This is the amount of corn, the amount of grain that's come off this field, which is weighed as it passes through the combine. And each dot gives us the yield what's coming off it. So you can see down there and again here within this green average green zone we've got a bit of a higher yielding area here and then when we look on the map lo and behold we've got a slightly darker green area here so what we're finding is beginning of april we're actually seeing where our yields going to be coming from in these fields so again what do we do with this nitrogen so we know these are going to yield quite well so we don't need to force these on. These areas probably want a bit more nitrogen to get the green area going so we can get the photosynthesis and get more grain out of these crops. That's one thing we can do by taking these zones and varying where we put the nitrogen so we're not wasting it, we're not putting more on than what is actually needed. But the other thing we're now starting to do is looking at this map and looking at this map and if they're colorating together, next time this field is drilled with a field of wheat, we can use it to plan where we put the seeds. So here, if we put more nitrogen on, yet we're still not getting the yield, something else is wrong here. We probably need more seed in the ground. There might be something in the soil what's affecting the germination of the seed, for example. So we're not getting the plant count we probably need. So here what we can do is we can take a zone and when the drill passes over, it just pops a few more seeds in this area. As it comes down here, actually we can probably get away with a few less seeds here because this is a very productive piece of land. So we do that, we go out on the ground, we'll actually count how many plants are in these zones once we've done that so we know our establishment rates. So we can really tailor precisely across the field where we're putting seeds and how many seeds are needed to give us our optimum yield. So the more and more data we build up of this, the more and more precise we can get. So I hope you found that informative. That was just a little look at what we can do with um, this technology, with the satellites going above us and, and the computer systems here, how I plan precisely the work, what's going to happen within the fields, not just within the whole field, but actually the imagery we're getting is down to three and a half meters squared. So it's quite in-depth precision that we're looking at and we're placing and the traceability we then can get. So from taking the files off the um, computer once I've designed it, onto the tractors, the job being done, and then that coming back into the office, back into the computer here and logged and saved. So we can see the, the decision systems behind it, why we've put a product on and where, what made us choose to do that, down to it actually being applied, what a product was applied, when it was applied, what day, what time, all logged back onto this computer, onto that field. So yeah, full traceability which is the great thing about British agriculture is the amount of traceability which is there and also the precision behind everyday decisions. When you see the tractors going up and down the fields, there's a lot of decisions already being made before that tractor goes out and does what it has to be done. So yeah, like I say, hope you enjoyed that. Do subscribe to our channel so you can keep up to date with all the other updates what are happening on the estate and I will look forward to seeing you in March. Okay, thank you everybody.